Hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon or good morning or good evening, wherever you're joining from. Hey, Prava. I am Gift um, Egwenu, and I have this live stream every Thursday here on my channel where I invite a guest um, to come talk about a very interesting topic or just talk about you know cool things that you're doing, cool work that you're doing. And with me today, I have an amazing guest, Linda. Linda, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Linda, Linda Ikechukun. Um, I don't have a label for myself. You know how people <laughs> introduce themselves as front-end developers, uh, this, this, this. That's because um, over the course of my career, I've been in a lot of things. And right now, I would say... Uh, <clears throat> Well, a combination of everything, I would just describe myself as like a technical communicator, I guess, because I've been a mm. cloud engineer. I've worked as a software, like front-end developer, and I've worked as a technical writer. So, <laughs> Yeah, interesting, because I was going to ask you that question later on, how you've like moved from cloud, front-end, technical writing, and soon something else, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Anyway, um, Linda already gave like a sneak peek into what we're going to be discussing today, and that will be technical writing. So personally, I know what technical writing is, but I'm sure like people in chat, by the way, if you're in chat and you have any questions while we're having this conversation, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'll definitely pick it up. Um, what would you say technical writing is? Like if someone was very curious. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's in front of my door. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Um, minutes and just in. yeah, I think that's fine. We are going to take a, a break. <laughs> um, I can, I can. Are you going to go? Okay, I will just continue and then. When you come back, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this kind of things is always expected when you're doing live streams, right? But it's fine. Um, I would go off to answer what I feel technical writing is. And when Linda comes back, she would also give her own explanation. Um, to me, technical writing is basically writing um, content or technical um, documentation that's anyone working in tech can use and this could be like a software developer you know working with a specific technology and they're trying to learn it they eventually go to a documentation to you know learn that technology the essence of somebody putting that content there is technical writing so technical writing is any document that um, is written for a technical audience um yeah i didn't expect that linda will go off so um, my own personal experience with technical writing is interesting because I kind of see technical writing in like two different folds, right? Technical writing as a career. Oh, she's back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. I've never had like this kind of break before. <laughs> Breaking transmission. Um, yeah. yeah, so I guess we can just continue from like talking about what technical writing is and then just move on from that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I already like give my own explanation. So do you want to? Oh, okay. Um, so um, technical writing is like a lot of things. Yeah, it applies to a couple of different industries like the health industry, um, automobile industry. Um, but the thing is that now, when people talk about technical in, um, writing, they are usually like referring to doing it within like the software industry or like the tech industry. Yeah? And it will just be, just to simplify it, it's just um, like creating, trying to break down how, you know, the intricacies of like application, how they work or how certain technologies work into writing that people will relate to and can understand. Um, for me, that's like the most basic thing. If, yeah, just to avoid adding jargon to it. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah i i also like said almost same thing you said it's like you know content written for technical folks like yeah i know see it like if you're working with react for example right the documentation it's that's like technical um it technical document written for developers um yeah. it's a very weird example but okay um yeah i i i'm happy that we've gone through technical writing hope folks know what that means i'm interested to know like how you fell into like you mentioned you said with cloud engineering and then you went front-end development and technical writer technical writing so how did that um path you know come across like how did you go from that yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I I went to um, University of Port here in Nigeria, and towards the end of my school year, um, my department had this partnership with Huawei, and so. By the they... way, sorry, that name I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you say Huawei, I'm like okay. <laughs> Start from the, like, it's spelled H-U-A-W-E-I. Now, mm -hmm. you don't pronounce the H. And the oh. U, you pronounce it as, like, W. It's like Huawei. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, it's a common <laughs> problem. It took yeah. me, I, I think I worked there for almost, like, three months before I started pronouncing it properly. So it oh, took God. me a while. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, my school had like this partnership with Huawei, my department actually, or my HOD, because it was the one that brought them. We had like um, acquaintances there okay. or something. And so they sent down a couple of like training materials, you know, and I just picked up interest in it and I would study them, you know, have practicals. And lucky for us, they gave us like free access to Huawei Cloud. Cloud is like AWS, yeah. Okay. And I could do like practicals and whatever I wanted to do, learn. And then on uh, some months, they sent down some of the engineers down to come and like answer questions and stuff like that. And that was how I became interested in cloud, actually. Um, so, yeah, I did study electronic and computer engineering in school, so I had a bit of a programming background, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so after school, um, while these Huawei representatives were visiting our school, I was always in contact with them, talking with them, you know, showing them what I was doing and all that. So, like, after school, uh, after I wrote my last paper, they called, like, hey, will you be interested in, like, an internship or something? And yeah, that was how I stayed working for Huawei as like a cloud intern. So I worked there for like a year. And I'm a very curious person. I tend to tell people that my bot cannot stay in a place <laughs> for long periods of time. Yeah. yeah. And during that period, you know, on Twitter, and then I had a couple of friends that were like into front end and stuff like that. It got me curious and I was like, this thing people are doing, let me try and see if I can do it too. Yeah, so I started learning. I had been learning to code in school, uh, but when I studied the cloud, and I just dropped it and focused on the cloud. And then I would go to work. I think the pandemic actually helped because this was in mm -hmm. early 2020. Yeah. And after like working, if I had tasks to do for that day, I would do it and then I would you know, start my front-end classes, free code camp, all that. Mm -hmm. And I started learning, yeah? Built a couple of things, built my portfolio website, made some noise on Twitter, told people that <laughs> made <laughs> some noise. <laughs> you know, I mean, it helps, right? So, yeah, 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 it did help, yeah. And um, told people that, okay, you know, I've, I've done this and I get the hang of it. I've learned to react. I've built a couple of things. Um, if you have any job or anything, uh, I can do it. At that time, one of my friends was working at, um, uh, what's the name of this company? But anyway, they needed, like, they had this project they were working on, and they needed, like, a contract front-end developer. So that was, like, my major first front-end job. Okay. And we built, like, I think it was, like, a, now that I think about it, a delivery 
um, admin portal. So I was the front end person. And, you know, I, I did that. It Were you really the front end person? A lot Because it was true that, that I actually did learn React. Everything I was learning was just practicing and toy project. But that forced me to like crack my head, look for answers to state management. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> and at that time, it was re um, Redos that, you know, people were using for like state management and everybody yeah. knows Redos is just ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, it had me, um, I did a lot like, that was my project that actually like helped me learn React and like front end. And then after that, I started looking for like full-time jobs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my front end developer full time job. I think you posted it or something. Mm -hmm. Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I hit up the um, recruiter and it was like, can you do the job? I'm like, yes. It was like, so what have you done? So I showed him, like, you know, the project I just finished working on, the delivery admin stuff. And he was like, oh, wow, that's good. Okay. So how much are you looking at per month here? And we did all that. that <laughs> no formal, it wasn't like a formal interview. Like he just saw it and was like, who can I speak to that can you know, verify that you did build this? Because we did a lot of things on that project, yeah. And after that, they asked me what I would collect for like a monthly wage. And I stayed working for them as front as a front end developer. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and then I then moved to technical writing. My story is a very funny one. Um, so while I was... Um, learning front end yeah mm -hmm. i i've always been i think interested in writing or something but then i started writing about what i was learning you know i created like my portfolio website had like a blog and all that Started writing about things i was learning my challenges everything and i was on my own one day somebody from linkedin reached out to me that um they've been reading like my articles you know, and I do share them on Twitter, which is like something like Twitter is like very important. Please, you know, put yourself out there because like I see that all the time. I see that all the time. Yeah, it's Twitter has played like some part. Yeah, it has played like a significant role. So I did that. Uh, the person reached out to me. I was like, oh, so we're starting this new startup and we're going to be creating technical content for like startups. Is that something? you want to do and i was like okay let's try this and then they were paying per piece um per article i think 300 dollars, and then after they moved to like 350 then 400 then 500 you know oh. um yeah so i i was doing that for money. A while. <laughs> that's a lot of money it, it was okay. yeah it was fun because my curious mind it just kept me constantly occupied yeah because i had to like learn new things and then write about it you know, sometimes it will be to write something for, say, like fingerprint JS, learn something about front end security or something. So I had to learn new things and write about it, and it kept my mind busy. Actually, you know, for the kind of <laughs> the kind of yeah. curious mind that I have, yeah. Um, so I was at my front end job for like a year and some months, and then another company reached out to me this time for like a full time technical writing thing. Okay. And, you know, they told me what they were offering. I'm like, hmm, that was going to be my first time earning, like, full time in dollars. And I wow. compared it to what I was earning, and I'm like, hmm, hmm, hmm. And you know, with, before now, so we kind of have very similar stories when it comes to, like, technical. I'll share mine. But before, I just wanted to ask you, so while you were doing these um, technical writing on the side, you were still doing the front-end developer job, right? So you were yeah, doing yeah, yeah. Them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, the full-time role for like technical writing came and, you know, they told me what they were offering. And it was like, that was a lot of money, you know, compared to what I was earning in Naira for like the front-end job. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, this is something I've been doing. Yeah, you know, doing it full-time wouldn't be so much of a big deal. It would allow me, you know, wander into curiosity the way i'm always wandering into things yeah so that's how i got into technical writing and i've been doing that yeah i quit my okay no, no, I quit my <laughs> job too. 
<laughs> you want to see that now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I've been doing technical writing since. And my new role requires that I write too, but it's something else again. <laughs> okay. I, I think if you want to share that part, we can share it towards the end. But it's fine if you don't want to, since it's not, like, out there yet. Yeah. But I'm very happy to hear this. I think I knew, like, it I, I, I knew like a bit of it because I knew when you were working at Huawei and then yeah. and all of that. But it's just very interesting because I kind of find that a lot of people always ask that is just is it just coding? Like is is can you only be a software developer if you're interested in tech? Right. But yeah. I think another angle to this story is that you can literally, you know, do other things. Right. Yeah, that literally yeah. went from cloud to front end yeah. to technical writing. So in case you don't know, technical writing is another area in tech that you probably um need to get into if you are interested in writing right because if you don't like writing it's not for you right <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's um, um, my own personal story i can also quickly share that is uh, how i started writing is also because i was you know interested in sharing what i was learning and i had a blog so i started writing for on on my blog i didn't know that people were reading it right i just used to write and post yeah. and also share on twitter like and I was very consistent, so I, I did that a lot. And then people started reaching out to me to also write and be paid. And I was like, wait, so I can get paid to do this thing, <laughs> you know? And when I heard the money, me that was any Naira at that point, I was like, oh, you pay me, you know, $500 to write. And of course, I agreed to do it. And, you know, that's another stream of income for me as a developer because I was still working yeah. as a developer like with um, Linda. So it's almost like there are endless opportunities in tech. You just need to tap into the one that you find that will be beneficial to you and you'll be happy doing, I guess. Anyway, uh, moving from how you started technical rights, and I'll like I, I to just add, add something that's yeah. like... Um, you know, people will always reach out on Twitter to like, uh, I want to get into tech. Where do I start from? Um, my advice would be like, just pick any field that is like accessible to you, yeah? That you start something, that you start out in a particular part in tech, does not mean that that's where you have to end up. You know, there's always room for you to like evolve or like move, you know, pick the most accessible, get into it, and then expand your wings from there, you know, just move if you're not feeling it or find till you find what works for you you know there are endless opportunities here so yeah cool that's good um yeah moving on i i know that we already touched on some of these points but i also would like you to just expand a bit more on it's like if someone is interested in technical writing now i like to see technical writing as a skill or a, I would say skill because you can apply, you can have technical writing skill without writing blogs for publications. You can just be very good at writing technical documentation at your job, even if you're a front-end developer or a back-end developer or something around that. But I'm yeah. interested in what you think are some different ways people can be involved in technical writing. And this could either be like they are doing it for their own personal gain or growth, or you're doing it because they want to, you know, end up building a career in it. Like, what a typical process you'd find people going through or people that you already know are doing it. Like, do you have some examples to share? So when you say process, is it like... Um, um... I mean, like, the different path. So if you can say, oh, for example, you can do technical, be it a, a document documentation engineer or something like that that's one part yeah. to take or you okay. can write freelance for publications that's another part to take okay. or you can do devrel right anyway i just want to hear what your thoughts are on that you oh, know, okay um aspect. yeah i guess um usually from my experience or like what i've seen um i think there are like you know, full-time technical writing rules. There are like three routes that um, companies take these days. Um, you can be hired as a technical writer for um, majorly for like um, documentation. Yeah, you can be hired as a technical writer for support. 
you know, support documents, people calling all the time and having problems, and then you're like tasked with creating documents that provide answers to those questions so that, you know, support people don't have to constantly, re you know, repeat the same answers all the time. And then there are companies that hire technical writers to create technical blog posts to be able to like attract their target audience, mm. you know, to their products when they search for things that interest them on Google. And then there's this side of like technical writing that is kind of like marketing focused. Um, I think the term people used to um, identify it now is technical content marketing. Oh. So what you're creating will not be extremely technical, like so technical for like um, developers or like, but it, it will be like for, In marketing, there's something called this is me digressing a bit. There's something called <laughs> funnel. Yeah, um, bottom of the funnel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I <hate> you, <laughs> exactly. So you'll just be creating content for people that do not know that this um product or software tool exists, but like you'll be creating content around the niche of that software tool or like product, um, just for people that would search anything in, in, related to that tool, you know, um, yeah. So those are like full-time roles that I've seen in the industry that people hire technical writers for. And then, yeah, there's, there are like other careers that you can use your technical writing skills to like, you know, you know succeed in. DevRel, for example, you know, you'll be writing or sometimes your, your DevRel can be focused on like, creating content. Sometimes it can be like, you know, doing videos and all that. And product management too. I feel like um, being able to write, especially writing in a way that relates to developers, it's also an important skill for like product managers to have. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you're able to like, you know, write down your, uh, I've seen companies that tax product managers with writing documentation. Mm, yeah, yeah. So that's I something. Um, yeah, and then even for developers, yeah, everyday software engineers having, um, yeah, being uh, having like that technical writing skill helps because you're able to like comment your code better, create better documentation, so that other people that want to use your code can you know understand it. You know, you're able to document your APIs properly. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just add to that. I feel like technical writing, again, is, is a skill, right, first of all. And yeah. they have different tangents to it. You can either just use it for, you can even have a personal blog where you're writing tutorials for your own self, right? Yeah. So there are different routes to take if you're interested in technical writing. If you want to, like, do it full-time or just do it as something you enjoy doing. Um that leads me to the next thing. Also pointing out that questions, please leave them in the chat if you have any questions about what we're discussing. Um, when you think about on a high level, um, the technical writing process, what would you um, explain it as? I know that we already know that technical writing is like you creating a document for a technical audience or maybe not a technical audience, but it depends on the kind of writing, but um, yeah. off, off the top of your head, what would, what would be a typical procedure to go about writing? So for example, we have, let me find a dummy topic, um, um, getting started with view router, for example, yeah. like what would be the process to go about writing an, an article about that topic? Okay, so whether it's like an article or like a you know tutorial for like a documentation or anything, I, I, um, the technical writing process always starts with research. That's like okay. the most important thing because um, as a technical writer, you mainly be creating content about things that nine out of ten times you don't know how they work, and so you're going to be um, wearing the cap of like a tester and a researcher. So you always start with researching about, you know, okay, what do what should I know already or what type of information exists about this particular topic? So you will start with looking out for, okay, fine, what's view router? <clears throat> you know, what is it useful? 
okay, how can I use this? Um, how do I start using this? Do I need to download it? Do I need to do this? You know, you mm -hmm. download it, test it out, see how it works. You're going to be both a tester and a researcher. That's like the first step. You're testing, you're researching, you're gathering information, you're building your own tests, you know. And then after that, next thing to do is to determine the audience you're writing for. Now, <clears throat> view router, we can assume that it, um, getting started with view router, you can create that, do, um, that article or like the document for back end developers or beginner, junior, like front end developers. And for each of these audiences, the way you would you know, present the information would be different considering what they know and what they don't know. So like after research, the most important thing to discover is who are you writing this for? Who is your, like, your target audience? That will, like, that will guide what you should write about and what you should not write about so as not to bore people. Yeah, and not, you know, make sure that. So when, when generally for technical writing, the target audience are developers. And from years of research that has been done, psychological research, it's a common thing for human beings um, not to have patience when they're searching for information online. Yeah, yeah, they just want to get to it, use it, and move on. <clears throat> but for developers, that impatience is heightened. And so finding out who your audience, it helps you to like avoid including fluff or unnecessary information that will just you know, um, be like an obstacle to finding exactly what they need to take out from that document. To yeah. yeah. So that's the first, th those are the, like the first two steps. And then after that, you start with like creating your drafts, you know, building up like an outline helps put your thoughts together. What do I, after you've all, you know, identify your audience, now you know what to write about and, you know, what say for view router, um, you're writing for like front-end developers, you're assuming that they know what view is, so you don't need to explain that. But if you are writing for back-end developers who are not like, you know, accustomed to like view, you will start with explaining that view is even a framework first, in mm -hmm. a Java framework, this is how it works, before you now get to what a view router is. So that's, you know, the audience like kind of directs the direction that the documents should go in. And so after that, you build up an outline just to help you put your thoughts together, you know, know what to cover and what not to cover and what not. Then you get to like drafting your first um, version of the document. <clears throat> now, this is the thing that um, people waste too much time on, yeah? And <laughs> I used to say that before, but you need to understand that when you're working with deadlines, um, it's easy for you to drown in the value of like the first draft trying to make it perfect the idea at this point is not to write things that anybody else is supposed to understand it's just supposed to make sense to only you the idea for this point is just to you know release all the information you have about what it is you want to write onto a piece of document just write it down so that you know you can see what you have then the cleanup process is like later, but like the drafting stage is just to get it out. Don't edit, don't format, don't bother, just get it out. Because if you spend a lot of time trying to like make what you're writing at the drafting stage, you know, um, presentable, you end up spending a lot of time and not achieving anything. And this is why like a lot of writers that I coach, this is usually where they have problems trying to get yeah. their draft. It's not supposed to look perfect at this stage. In fact, it's not even supposed to be readable to other people. It's just your property at that point. And then the next stage is the, like the editing phase and the cleanup stage, you know, where you now move things around, remove things, add things, clean things up and all that. And, you know, comes the review and yeah. But like research and audience identification is like the most important. Yeah. Honestly, I like that you started with that because that is very, very important. You know, when you were mentioning like audience and writing for backend, I was just thinking that hmm, maybe sometimes I don't even do that part, especially when I'm writing for myself, like 
publishing it to my blog yeah you know i think it also like varies like for example if i write something i figured out a a fix to a bug and i just want to document it so i don't forget i'm not really going to think about who the audience is at that point but yeah, yeah I, I definitely like that you included that um tiktoker is asking us to share our sample of the first or the early days writing that we have for me personally i think you don't want to read it <laughs> but i can share mine it's the oh, first hmm. post on my blog i think but yeah i, I if, think if mine you want too. to share yours too i can put it in the chat <laughs> but I, i'm not I, proud I, of I, it uh, a couple of things mm-hmm. but i think you can find my early stage writing on like my website code with linda something yeah, should put be it in the chat yeah this is mine and i will look for yours and put in chat as well but yeah just know that it's like an iteration process because when you start you know you're still like you know building up and you can compare definitely you see growth so if you go to our blogs if you check the old post and you check something that we've written um, recently you definitely see the you know improvements we've made because we learn every day that's why i like you know tech and you know everything around that um okay i want to move on to something else which of course i know people would be very interested in knowing and which is like the job opportunities you know interviewing tips so because you've worked as a technical writer um technical content manager um you are more familiar with the process for interviewing for a technical writing role. So um question is what's a typical process? I know that it could be different from companies to companies but yeah. what's like a typical job application like? So if someone and when should somebody apply for a technical writing role? Like yeah. Okay. Um so I'm just going to plug in that I've written about this actually and if you if I don't give detailed answers in this um um stream uh you can go to my I I actually because of that I added it in the description of this video. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the links are there. Yeah. But you can also plug it as well. Yeah, you can just go to everything technical writing and I I think the last one of the last um articles I wrote was about you know interviewing and questions and all that but when should you apply for a technical writing role ha huh, really if i give you my advice really don't take it anyway cuz i always apply to things that i'm not qualified for <laughs> <laughs> okay you, know, you have to <laughs> you have to have the audacity of <laughs> I, just let me just Let me just, okay. <laughs> just have to have enough other city, yeah. But like I think a good time to start applying is when you've built up like a reasonable portfolio and okay. you have like different samples of like technical documents on your portfolio and that's like a good time to start applying, yeah, because you now have the confidence that you can do this thing. You've done it, you've practiced, you've spent some time reading about it, you know, building up yourself. that would be a good time to apply um for a typical technical writing interview process um so most of them you start with your with you know applying sending out your resume or like mm-hmm. somebody reaching out to you um either ways um first of all you usually be asked to submit a portfolio which is why i mentioned that a good time to apply is like when you have a portfolio yeah so you you? Ask me to be yeah. to be can i also Actually, yeah, yeah. does a portfolio um because i was also going to ask later do you need a portfolio but now that you said it's so what's a portfolio this time okay. you write yeah um so a technical writing portfolio kind of like just shows your range as a technical writer you know um the kind of documents that you can create um um uh, one of the people i admire in like the technical industry try to like break it down to like see that they're like about four or five major types of documents that um technical writers create now these are tutorials conceptual guides and explanations and then references 
-hmm. And so your technical writing portfolio, um, the most common one is tutorials and like um, explanations um, that we see across like most documentation sites or like um, blog articles and stuff like that. So your technical writing portfolio is just showing that you can do the job of a technical writer. And that's like on it, you should have these different type of samples of like documents that I've mentioned. And that's like tutorials, conceptual guides, explanatory guides, references, API docs, if you can, you know, just have everything in one place and explain your thought process while creating these documents. You know, um, it gives the recruiters, gives them like an insight into your thought process, your mind, how does it work? What are your processes? If I ask you to document this product or if I ask you to document this future, how would you go about it? Where would you start from? What would you do? Um, I would have plugged mine, but most of the projects I've worked on are for <laughs> internal engineering teams. And so unless it's a recruiter, I really, I don't share my publicly. Public. Yeah. So I also uh, found a, sorry, I found a post you wrote about technical writing portfolio. And I'm thinking if people are looking for some examples, maybe you can, um, I don't know if you have some links in that article. Yeah, examples, yeah. But there are like several yeah, examples. so you can check that link for some examples to see in how you should structure yours if you're thinking about creating a portfolio. But that's nice. Um, yeah, continue, Linda. Yeah, um, so the portfolio-ish, um, you'll be asked to like, you know, submit your portfolio stuff like that, and, you know, make sure that your portfolio is really detailed, explaining your thought process and all that, and then submit. If they like what they see, you will now be invited to, like, an interview. And in this interview, usually um, they give, like, a tax, you know, and it could be, like, okay, look at this section of our documentation. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What would you change about it to make it better? Why would you change that? Why do you think that your changes would make this better? Yeah. Okay. And or they can just give you like um, an imaginary future and be like, okay, assuming we have this future that engineers are working on, create a document or just just something to work on the way that you know front-end developers are giving projects to like so, yeah. Work on. Yeah. yeah. So they will give you something to work on. Or uh, they can just pick any arbitrary topic and ask you to write about it. Um, one of the funniest things that I've been asked to write about <laughs> was, um, I think, how to. Now, it might not necessarily be technical. Uh, at a certain point, a company asked me to write about how to make bread toast to a five-year-old. Oh, OK. <laughs> That that sounds like a very fun interview question. <laughs> yeah, very, very fun. Now, the essence of like, trying to see how you simplify things. Because mm. um, most times, uh, um, as a technical writer, things you'll be documenting can be very complex. It's your duty to bring it down, you yeah. know, simplify it to like the level of the general audience so that it's not only specialized engineers that can understand what you're saying, even people that just started their journey can really, you know, get what you're saying. And so I got the question. I was like, sorry, come again. <laughs> yeah. It sounds, it sounds easy, right? But really, if you just, yeah, it's, 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 point. it's a mind game too. Cause now they've told you like to explain to a five year old, actually, you know, how to make bread toast. And so you need to be, Make sure that your instructions are direct. There are no assumptions, you know? Yeah, so um, after that, normal interview, they, you know, look at what you've done. If it matches their level of, like, skill that they're looking for, then they'll reach out to you. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. usually it. Um, technical writing interviews are not as prolonged as software engineering where you can <laughs> to just do things and do things and do things yeah it's quite straightforward yeah. from my experience well, that's cool 
That's cool. I, I remember there was a time in my life when I wanted to be a tech, technical writer full time and I was applying to a lot of, you know, jobs. I remember I applied to Facebook and all that, but they aired me. <laughs> <laughs> they did not reply to me. So I just gave up and I went back to my front end engineering. Role. <laughs> but it would have been nice if I got that kind of interview questions, you know. But yeah. for people interested, yeah, it's it's there are, there are a lot of opportunities for tech writers. So yeah, you should definitely look into it. And I just want to also plug in the route of being a freelance technical writer because there's also the possibility to do that, right? You can yeah, also yeah, like, do that. Yeah. Um, um, I know that there are a lot of resources for people, but can you share like a few, for example, if someone here is interested in technical writing and maybe they've already started writing, but they don't know that there is a path for them to take to actually get paid to write. What would you like advise for people like that? And yeah, just tell us because we want to learn from you. Um, <laughs> so um, as a freelancer, if you're like trying to like, um, which I advise everybody to freelance for a while um, as a tech writer, get your hands dirty, you know, try it out. Um, the thing with freelancing is that it gives you the opportunity to work with editors that help you become a better writer. Yeah, um, in my early tech writing days, I used to write for Free Code Camp. Now, Free Code Camp does not pay you, but the gain mm -hmm. I did get that was working with your editors. You know, they would walk you through their thought process of why this thing you wrote like this should be written like this. And so through that back and forth process, you're learning a lot about becoming a better writer which is a thing I advise like all tech writers to do. Yeah, Don't be focused on the money yet. There are sites that you can contribute to, you know, mm -hmm. contribute articles to. They will not pay you, but you get to work with their editors. And that in itself alone, it's very valuable because you become a better writer. That back and forth, that interaction. Okay, this thing, if we put it this way, it makes more sense because this, 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 you know, that's how... That is how like I've evolved as a writer because when I look at um, things I wrote like you know two years ago and now, there is a huge difference, and that huge difference can be ascribed to like working with editors. Yeah, that's one thing that's you know side advice though. But then yeah. um, trying to like make money out of tech writing, well, in the freelancing world. There are a lot of, um, still, you need to have a portfolio, do, or like have samples of mm -hmm. things done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like, um, there are a couple of sites, I think, that, you know, Let me look for some of them. them. And some, some agencies, some technical content agencies that ask people to, you know, have, mm, invite guest authors to write for them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a route that um, you can, you know, follow. For full-time jobs, um, lots of companies right now are, you know, remotely hiring for, like, tech writers. And one of my favorite sites to use to find jobs is Startup Jobs. There are a lot of, like, startups there looking for, like, technical writers. So if you open up that site now and, like, search for technical writers, you're sure to, like, find... 50 or 100, if not like hmm. open rules, yeah, for tech writers, you know. So there are a lot of like companies there. Um, startup jobs or some startup jobs. Yeah, I yeah. I for all the links, I'm just posting it as you're seeing them in the chats. Um okay. quick you. one, we have a question, and I think yeah, this is a good question. So she is asking you that for someone that is just getting started with technical writing. Does she have to create a website to host her portfolio or would you see hosting on sites like Medium is sufficient? What do you um, think? Um, so it depends on what you want to do, actually. You know, how creative you want to be. My tech writing portfolio is on Notion. It's at straightforward as on Notion. Yeah. Um, if you if if like say you want to publish your own articles and you have the strength, you know, to go forward and 
create your own website, by all means, do that. But if not, um, I usually advise technical writers to publish the articles on like Dev2 because of the mm-hmm. audience. You find yeah. your, the audience you're targeting on Dev2 that you would on Medium. People are moving away from Medium. So like just focus on Dev2 or like hash node. Those are like where your target audiences are. So that would be like better spaces to publish in. Yeah, I 100% um, agree. I am all for also like have your own, create your own space on the internet, meaning have your own website. I always say that, right? But if you feel like it's going to take you a lot of time to yeah. build it and all of that, you can host on Hashnode and um, dev.to like um, Linda suggested. But yeah, honestly, I feel like the moment you put stuff out there, that's the most important thing because... You can also have like a notion page that has links to all the things you've published exactly. somewhere else, right? And so it's that's like, basically how yeah. my is it's just like a notion page, you know, links to the things I've done, mm-hmm. what they're about, you know, my thought process while I was working on it, how I worked on it, challenges I faced, how I was able to overcome those challenges and just that. Yeah. Yeah. So you could use any of these um routes. Interesting. We have another question. Um, when asked to write an article on an interview, are you going to write it live or would you be giving it oh, so go and do it? Yeah. Of like technical writing, <laughs> software engineering that they you know want to kill you with anxiety. <laughs> you know, from my own experience, nobody has ever asked me to do anything in life. It's always like a take home thing. Go yeah. to it at the time and submit it when you're ready. Yeah, I can imagine it's not possible. Technical writing involves you doing research. So you can't be sitting exactly. in a call with somebody and be you can you know, do Googling life, yeah. and doing all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't need to do it live. Um, moving back to my own questions. And I like that we've gone from like, hey, how do we start with technical writing? How did we start with technical writing? So how you can land a job um, doing technical writing. I would like to like also talk about, like you to talk about like um, some tips on actually doing the job. So tips on writing technical article, like maybe you can share two or three tips, it's fine. Um, what do you find that maybe you or people around you that also do it have as, uh, should I say, holy grail, like something that they always do before publishing an article um, that helps, you know, with the quality and audience and all of that, yeah. Um, let's see. So, <clears throat> I always tell people to read a book on grammar as technical writers. Now, you might think that it's just necessary for, like, creative writers and people that do other forms of writing. When I stayed out, I read the book Everybody Writes mm. by... I, I have forgot it. So, yeah, very yeah. sweet book, very important if you're trying to like get better at grammar, yeah. And you know, it contains a lot of tips for you to help you to help you like beef up like the quality of your writing. And it's not just for you know creative writers, for everybody it helps technical writers. So if you can, I would you know advise them for everybody to like get that book, read it, consume it page to page and apply it. And then for me personally, I have a list of like checks mm-hmm. that it's not public but i should be making it public um towards the end of this month probably share it on the website okay. um i have a list of checks that i you know after i've done my draft i've cleaned it up i've gotten it ready then i have like a list of like grammar checks and um general um checks actually that i just check off my documents you know where before i publish um, that keeps me in check too. Um, yeah, I think that's it. The the okay. major thing is just being knowledgeable about grammar helps a lot as a technical writer. That's the yeah. tip I have really just cool. reading grammar, punctuation, passive voice, and all that. You know. Yeah, um, my own. I will add two things to what Linda has shared. First of all about the grammar stuff, because you can only read as much. It's not like you're studying English. So I always yeah. recommend people to do use Grammarly and <laughs> Word Tune. 
actually oh, I yeah, use yeah, it yeah. And for then there's everything. This other, yeah. There's this mm-hmm. other tool that I actually use. Hopefully, let's see if I can find it. Uh, Quill Bot. Quill. Oh, I know it. Okay, I've, but I don't use it. Yeah, I look for it. I think it's a lifesaver for me because sometimes when my sentences don't make sense to me, um, so I have I use a premium version. I just mm-hmm. copy it and paste it there, and it kind oh. of refines the sentence to make more sense than mm-hmm. I could have made it. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah I think it's the same thing what Tune does for me. Because I'll write something, and to me, that sentence is really, you know, hitting. Like, when I read it, I'm like, yes, this is, you know, I'll post it on that platform, and the thing will change it to something way better than I would have thought. And, you know, it's the small things. It's like changing is to our something. Just those small things that changes everything. And the interesting bit is I use it for everything. When I'm posting tweets on Twitter, it, because it's like a Chrome extension, so it's on your computer everywhere. The same thing oh, with wow. Grammarly. And I think maybe this Quill boot, I'll just post the links here in chat. If yeah, you can use it, it if you're sending energy. a message. Sorry? No, I'm saying that I don't know if Quill boot has an extension. Oh, like I okay. have it into a tag. Ah, oh, um, okay, okay. Yeah. But I, I, I really like using tools as well in addition to my own process, because honestly, there's so much you can do. There are things you yeah. still miss out, even if you review, review, review. So it's good to use tools like Grammarly, WordTune, Quillbot, and there are so many more out there. And most of them, you start off with the free um, um, trial, or they even allow you to use it for free without some access to some features. And then if you want to pay for it, you can pay for it. And also, there is a technical writing course that Google created, I think in, I don't know the year, but I've taken that course and it's very, 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 very helpful. So I'll also like post a link in case you're looking to beef up your technical writing skills. You can also check it out. I know that you talked a lot about grammar as well. You know, they talked about um, target audience, who should you be writing for? passive and active voice, you know, all of those things are really, really important um, if you're writing for a technical audience. Good. I think we have discussed a lot and we've been able to, like, answer a few questions and we've covered, like, most of the things I wanted to um, share in this stream. Thank you for joining, Linda. I don't know if you want to share, but, you know, in the beginning you mentioned that you'll be doing, you know, <laughs> but if you want to share, it's fine. Wait. Okay. So, yeah, till like I actually start because like right now I'm like on a break, so mm-hmm. um, yeah. um, next month, yeah, I'll just wait till then and I'll give everybody the news. So, okay, <laughs> if you want to know what that news is, you can follow Linda on Twitter to follow up on what she's going to share because it's like super exciting news, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope that this stream was very helpful. Personally, I learned a lot from you, Linda. So thank you for coming on. If um, you want to learn more stuff about, because I feel like we scratched the surface, right? But if yeah, you want definitely. to really learn more stuff, you should check out Linda's blog, Everything Technical Writing. And also she has a newsletter. I actually saw a comment about your newsletter here. Maybe somebody saying that they subscribed, yeah. but they never got any issue maybe they did not do that thing you know that thing where you subscribe and you know you know confirm your exactly your email and my newsletter is once a month it goes out once a month so if you subscribe you have to wait till the end of the month to get an issue and when you subscribe you can read previous um issues yeah it's publicly available on brief so yeah Mm. Okay, I will just share the Google thing now. I said I was going to share it. Um, Google technical writing. Yeah, maybe I forgot one other. Another tip is Google. <laughs> if you're writing anything, Google is super, super important. Yeah, your for best friend. Research. For, for anything in general, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they say make Google your best friend. Yep. I agree. Okay, yeah, I'll post it now. Um, is that a question? I have been looking up tech writing rules and their requirements, but I often find some 
stuff like API documentation, do you think documenting API by, oh, just put it here if you can see it, by father, I don't know what she wrote there. Yeah, the, I'd oh. rather be writing. Yes. Okay, I'd rather be writing. Is yeah, that's why like the for me, that guy has been a tech writer for over 20 years, and I don't even know how that resource is free. So, yes, please, it's like one of the best out there if you want to learn document API documentation. So, yes, please go ahead and use okay. it. Cool. All right, thank you um, for answering all the questions, Linda. This was really nice. And thank you everyone for also sticking around. I think we had a lot of people coming in. So it's, it, it means that people are actually very interested in this topic. So like I said, if you want yes. to learn more, follow Linda and subscribe. Sorry, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me plug myself too. Yep. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> thank you everyone. And I'll see you next week. Um, we'll be having another guest next week. So see you all. Bye. Bye. <laughs>